This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. It's straight to the point to respect people's time, and because we know knowledge and wisdom turn to business possibility, and possibility mixed with support and action become reality. In this podcast, we discuss leadership, sales, marketing, operations, team development, quality, and finance to drive sustainable results and everlasting impact to make the world a better place. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Steve, welcome to the show. It's fantastic to be here. I'd love that you were able to hop on and you took a chunk out of your day to be here to serve people in the entrepreneurial space. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. So would you be... Would you be willing to share a few sentences in your own way about who you are and what you do? Yep, sure. So I am the CEO and founder of Founderspace. And Founderspace is a global startup incubator and accelerator. We work with hundreds of entrepreneurs all over the world, helping them grow their business. I am also a venture investor, and I am the author of three books. A Make Elephants Fly, which is all about the process of radical innovation. Surviving a Startup, which is just what the title says. How do you survive a startup? And The Five Forces That Change Everything, which is about how new technologies like nanotech, CRISPR, gene editing technology, AI, robotics, space technology, all these technologies are transforming the world and society. Mm. I, I love that last one. Of course, if you're like me, you just like you just lost me there. <laughs> so, you just, you just, so I love your experience. You just said a few things. You're like, what did he just say? <laughs> so I've spent a long you time a bit in, work, a, yeah, in a good spent, and positive way, Steve. I, I spent a long time working with startups all over the world that are developing this tech, as well as scientists, some of them Nobel Prize winners. And researchers and trying to figure out where the technology is taking us next. Like, so Mm. what's going to happen with the next iteration of AI? What's going to happen when we implant chips into our brains on a massive scale, like Elon Musk wants to do, you know, what's going to happen with, you know, when we have robots that can really converse with us like human beings, how will that change our relationships? Right on, right on. Those are fascinating topics. And it's a world where many of us don't don't know that much about. So yeah, love that. And surviving a startup. I love that title because woo. <laughs> <laughs> you've been there. I know I have been there a number of times. Eight companies of your own and helped hundreds of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And so it's it is literally like survival in the beginning. So great title, Steve. Thank you. So I'm happy to kind of go into detail on surviving a startup. And what I have found uh, working with entrepreneurs, the key thing is it's so important that people start off in the right way. A lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs make a big mistake. So, uh, and their number one mistake, honestly, their number one mistake is they think that the idea matters. The idea they begin with matters. And, you know, everybody, like you think that there's an epiphany, right? You have to have this epiphany to break through. Well, what I found is that uh, that golden idea, more often than not, the one you think is going to make you rich, doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's either a bad idea, <laughs> you thought it was good, which is very easy to do. I've done it myself. Or it's, it's an idea that just isn't quite right. You haven't really figured it out yet. So what I tell entrepreneurs to do is don't make the mistake of coming up with one idea and latching onto that idea and then trying to go out and sell everybody on that idea. Do the opposite. Come up with 20 ideas, 20 ideas. And, and, and then don't even focus on any one of those ideas, but pick those ideas in a direction you want to head. So let's say you want to revolutionize the restaurant business. You think I have, you know, I want to change this. Either I want to start a new franchise or I have new technology that I want to apply to the restaurant business or new business models. I think I can do this. Come up with 20 ideas around that. And then don't go out and build those products or services. Don't go out and try to raise money. Don't do any of that stuff. 
What you do is spend 80% of your time up front going out and looking for the right people to implement in this area, in this field, in the restaurant business. Like, do I need somebody who, who knows this business inside out and has relationships? Do I need somebody who is a technologist who can help us like innovate beyond what other people do? Do I need somebody who's a user experience designer? So if we design something, it really captures people's attention. And who are the best possible people I can get? So you don't settle for like who you happen to know or who happens to be available. No, you really have to put in a huge amount of time doing this, like going out. Now, if you do that um, first, the beauty of it is you're not having to sell them on your idea. Because if you go up to somebody and say, do you like my idea? Do you want to join my company? Well, first of all, you're saying it's your idea, not their idea. <laughs> Secondly, you're saying they, get, they judge your idea, whether they like it or not. Um, and ever, like I said, most ideas are wrong. You know, this is something people don't realize. And I write about it a lot in my book. You know, there was a company out there and they started a video dating site. And they thought, wow, this was the early days of the internet. They thought video dating is going to be huge. Everybody's going to want to date by video. Well, sure enough, that idea didn't go anywhere. Like people didn't want to do it. They're like, why wouldn't people? But they don't want to do this. So they're struggling. Now they have a large file, video file that they want to share with their friends. They're like, well, oh, we could upload it to our video dating site. And instead of sharing this huge file, we just share the link and they can watch it on our site. And they go, oh, that's a great idea. And so they share it with the friends. It works really well. And then their friends want to do it. They want to start. So they enable that to happen. You know what that company's called today? <laughs> YouTube. That's YouTube. That's how YouTube <laughs> began as a video dating site. You know, but they, didn't, they didn't know, you know, it was a totally different idea. Google, Google began as a nonprofit. They were just focused on helping academics find research papers online. It was only later they figured, you know, they became all search engine for everything online. You, you name the company Slack, another huge one. Slack was, they began as a game, a game. Nobody liked playing the game. It wasn't a, very, wasn't a very appealing game, but the engineers had built this communications platform to collaborate in building the game. And the CEO was struggling. They went back to that. They were like, oh, this is our idea. This is what we, so what I'm saying is when you go out there, a, a biggest mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is that they lock down on one idea and they, they believe that if they just work harder, if they just push faster, if they just do more, they'll make this idea succeed. Well, honestly, most ideas are just ideas. <laughs> they aren't, they don't, an idea doesn't matter. What matters is what can your idea do for somebody? What does it enable? What value can you give to uh, the customer out there? That is what you need to figure out. So when you, first of all, get a great team, because if you don't have a great team in place to execute on your 20 ideas and plus their there are 50 ideas. Your team should be having, all of you should be having ideas because it's all of your company, not just yours. You know, you want everybody in this. So what you need to do is if you can't execute on it, you could have the best idea in the world. You could have started with the best idea and you will fail. And I've seen this happen. You know, I work with so many entrepreneurs. They have like a great idea, like an incredible idea. And uh, they just drop the ball and somebody else picks up that idea. And sure enough, they run and they become a huge company. So first get the great team, pick an area you want to focus on. And then step number three, really important, go to the customer. Don't build the product. Don't, again, don't try to raise money. You don't even know what you're doing. Pick up something you don't need to do that on. Go to the customer, completely engage with that customer. So, uh, you need to get inside that customer's head. And that involves not, the beauty of having 20 ideas or 50 ideas instead of one is that you're not hell bent on selling them your idea. Like if you go, let's say it's the fishing industry. You're like, I want to make the fishing industry a better industry, right? I want to stop them from getting all this bycatch where they're killing off all these fish unnecessarily. I want to make them pollute less. I want to have better working conditions on the fishing boat, whatever it is. I want to make this industry a better a more responsible, uh, more sustainable industry. Well, if you go to the fishing industry with, a, with your ideas, a lot of those ideas, they're going to be like, yeah, that's really great. But you know, we don't want to pay to have all new nets. We're just not going to pay. Like, we don't care. Like, like we, we only care about what we care about. And right now, they're pretty clear that they only care about their bottom line. 
So how would you get, how would you get to convert this industry? You're not going to get them by just hammering them with your ideas. What you're going to get to, what you're going to get to where you want to go by understanding what motivates them and then looking for an intersection with what you want to do and what they want to do. Oh, we have these new fishing nets that actually, you know, uh, cut down on bycatch, they pollute less, all these different things. And if you get them, you can it will make you 50% uh, more profitable. Well, suddenly you have their attention, right? You are solving a problem for them. So whatever business you're in, you need to embed yourself in that industry and go deep with your team and start testing things out. And as you go through this process, that's where the real breakthroughs come. Not at the beginning, but usually in somewhere in that process, you suddenly realize like YouTube did, oh my God, this is it. This is what people need. This is what they want. This is where we can offer what I call extreme value so that people that you just suddenly explode as a company. I love this conversation. <laughs> I love what you just dropped, Steve. Sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I love what you just dropped. A lot of people get, I have a couple of questions because a lot of people get caught up in, at least from my perspective, the shiny object syndrome, right? So some of the times, sometimes what you're saying I know you understand it. And even if you're in the audience, some of you understand it, but some of you don't. So some people get caught up in these ideas and then they're chasing all these multiple things. But one thing that I found really fascinating and important about what you said is there, there are a bunch of ideas on one main theme and topic in a specific market. So whether that's a market or a market segment or a niche or a niche specialty or whatever, level that's in what you said is pick restaurants for example and then what problem are you looking to solve inside the restaurants and that i think is what's important and then just capturing a bunch of ideas on how you can do that that's what i heard does that sound about right steve that's right and i also go into like i write about this in my book make elephants fly it's about elephant is your big idea you want to get it off the ground how do you go through that process how do you like if you're in the restaurant business, you can go in and you can pitch them 20 ideas and none of them may really resonate, right? Because honestly, when you go into a business, if people look at you and they, they look at your idea and they say, oh, that's nice, you know, come back when it's ready. What they're really telling you is not that they love your idea, they're blowing you off. Like they're, they're saying, I don't want it. What you need to hear, like when you go into the business and you're like running an idea past them, you need to hear not, oh, that's nice that, you know, come back later. What you need to hear is, oh my God, I need that today. How can I get that today? Can you give it to me now? Can I pay for it? Can I become an early user? What can I do? Like, this is a real problem we have. And a lot of times you might even have 50 ideas and none of them are that, those ideas aren't easy to come by, right? Ideas that make people like, that make them, they just have to have it immediately. So what you need to do uh, is you need to observe and ask questions. So when you engage with uh, in an area, you may have 20 ideas, you can bounce your ideas off. But what you're really looking for is do those ideas align with one of their top priorities. And I usually say, it has to be in their top, whoever you're talking to in whatever business, it has to be in their top five priorities. Like all of us in all of our jobs, like we have like five things we are focused on like solving at any one time. We have more than that, we can't get anything done. And literally, if your idea doesn't map to one of those, what they're going to say is, oh, that's nice. That's really great. Come back later <laughs> if they're being polite to you. Otherwise, this is just say, hey, go away. Either way, they're not going to buy your idea. And, and I compare it to this. Like when you download an app on your phone, it's very simple. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of apps out there, just like there are millions of ideas out there. And you download an app, you look at it and you go, oh, well, that's pretty nice. A week later, delete, <laughs> you, you either have forgotten about that app or you've deleted it. Like you never go back to it. Like the only apps you use, like they, they are in your top five priorities. Like you're looking for something to do a certain thing. So I call, this is another thing that I, I talk about like in surviving a startup, it's pent up pockets of demand. So hmm. out there in the world, there are pockets of demand that at any given time that are forming. It's, the world is constantly changing. We're, there's, uh, there's new technology that's emerging. There's trends that are happening. So, and finances are always changing. So there's new pockets of demand always forming that aren't yet being met by a big competitor. 
So they are open for startups to plug into them. However, your job as a, as a CEO or as an entrepreneur, your job is not, you can't create a pocket of demand. Like literally, if a pocket of demand doesn't exist, you can make the best product in the world. You can make it perfect, bug-free, you know, you know, put every feature in there you can imagine. Still nobody will use it. <laughs> like I've seen this happen. People are like, I have the best product in the world. I've spent for, and I'm like, but nobody cares. Like nobody, you can spend forever on that product. So what you need to find out there are things that people already want that they're not getting. And I call entrepreneurs, well, this is what entrepreneurialism is. It, they are demand seekers. They are hunting for demand. They're like oil wildcatters drilling down and looking so that they hit that gusher. And that gusher, when it comes out, when the demand is there, that's what propels your company to grow. If you don't have the demand, no matter how hard you work, you will not grow. You only grow in proportion to the, the demand. I absolutely love what you're sharing. I, I, I honestly don't think a day goes by that I don't share this with someone. I, this is such an important topic, but yet it, it does escape a lot of people because they get yes. caught up and passionate about these ideas. And I always say like passion doesn't create a business. Sure. It's great to fuel you when you're through tough times, but it doesn't necessarily make, it doesn't, yeah, you could it be might as not passionate meet as the you market want. match, right? There yeah. Might not be a market you could match. be passionate as you want about the product. You know, you could be building, you know, a black light bulb, right? And you can say this black light bulb, everybody wants it ever, you know, it's, it's a light bulb that emits no light. You've got to have it. I'm so passionate, but people are like, why do I need a black light bulb? <laughs> I don't need a black light bulb. I love it. I love it. Um, and, and, it, and it all comes down, what I heard when you were speaking is it all comes down to either the pain that the person is experiencing or the, 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 the avatar or the client ideal client, whatever it is that you're describing, yes. um, either the pain that they're experiencing or the desire, whatever it is, all comes yeah, down it, to, it, to whatever, one or two. It or doesn't even have to be pain. Like people just like some people want to grow their business faster. You, you know, they're not in pain because they're doing fine. But like, if you come to them with a way, wow, you can, you can double your revenue in the next year. They're like, okay, <laughs> like that's something I want. <laughs> like I want twice as much it. money. Tell me, how do I do it? I love it. This is great. So let's shift gears because I know we could go deep into any yeah. any three of those books and you would deliver yeah. a ton. And so I just want to encourage people to go out and get the books. We'll get to that. But what I'd like to do is, is ask you this question. I, I love just hearing from a variety of different people. And so you're going to bring not only your answer, but a lot of your experience and the people that you've worked with. What's the best thing about being in business, Steve? The best thing about being in business for me is that sure. I, I get to work with great, really smart, really creative entrepreneurs. And so every time I engage with, I help entrepreneurs, I fund their companies, they enter our programs. Every time I work with an entrepreneur, I actually learn something. So I'm sharing with them all my experience working with all these companies. I've done my own companies, three venture funded companies. I can share that, but each business is unique. As you know, every business is different. They all face problems. There's a lot of similarities between problems they face, but you know the, the nitty gritty details of the business are different and the world is always changing and engaging with people on that level is very exciting for me. Love that answer. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Okay. Now I have a question for you. Let's, <laughs> let's see how you answer this. Well, having worked with a variety of different founders and having a vast, you know, years of experience, what do you think is the number one problem with entrepreneurs? I know you shared a piece earlier. Do you think that is the number one? Well, it being an entrepreneur, like in surviving a startup, I write about this. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Like 90% of, you know, these high concept startups fail. If you're doing, that's if you're really pushing the envelope, like being super innovative. If you're doing a more mm -hmm. traditional business, that's slower growth. Uh, you, the rates are, survival rates are much better, but the, mm -hmm. the, you, the upside is limited. It's, you're not going to get the, the crazy, you know, unicorn status. So, right. um, you know, the things that entrepreneurs face that are really, really tough. Another one is probably that's probably bigger than the other ones I told you before is yourself. 
knowing yourself. Like, you know, you can have all the great advice in the world uh, that I could give you, but if you aren't suited to be an entrepreneur, uh, that can be a real problem. Mm. So there are certain people, like being an entrepreneur, honestly, they go into it for the wrong reasons. So some people go into entrepreneurship because they think I hate my boss. Like, I, I just want to get away from my boss. I want to be my own boss. And you know what I tell people? Your boss may be bad. You list all the bad things about your boss. But I tell you, the day you become an entrepreneur, you're going to get a boss that is like far worse than your old boss ever could be. Because, you know, this boss, this new boss you're going to have won't ever let you alone. Like this boss is you <laughs> and this boss, when you wake up in the middle of the night, there'll be the boss there telling you, you should be doing this. You should be doing that, stressing you out about problems. When you're on vacation, <laughs> the boss will be there with you. You will never escape the boss. And this boss has an endless, limitless a number of tasks for you always to be doing as an entrepreneur. And there's stress, there's uncertainty, all, there's financial risk. All these things are going to be on your shoulders as an entrepreneur. So uh, don't, the biggest problem with a lot of people is they don't, first of all, some people are just not suited to be entrepreneurs. Like they can't handle right the stress, on. like they can't handle it. Um, and, and they would be, if you know, you're that type of person and you like structure, you like predictability, <laughs> you like stability, you know, don't be an entrepreneur, get a corporate job, do something else. If you can handle those at a reasonable level then you can start improving yourself. Like you can start making yourself better at dealing with stress and other type of things, but you have to have a minimum threshold to be able to handle it. And then you also um, need to understand um, how to be a good boss to yourself. Like give yourself time off, give yourself breaks, have meaningful relationships with, don't cut everybody off in your family and friends because you think you have to work all the time. You have to work just as hard on that, on yourself and your human relationships with other people around you as you do on your business. Otherwise you're going to fail. So important. I'm glad you shared that, Steve. I, and look, I know you and I can talk about tactics and strategy all day long, but what you just shared is really important. And I, look, some people overlook it and, mm -hmm. and they find themselves way too stressed. So thank you. I really appreciate you sharing that. Steve, what... <laughs> So we're going to zip through the next two questions pretty quickly. So if you can give me a shortened version. Yeah. We, I find, right, from doing this, that I talk to a lot of people who are getting so much business, even through COVID, like they're just getting so much business that sometimes the chaos causes some overwhelm. Would you be willing to share your thoughts with me on what that means to you or some solutions that you might see yeah, through so that? Yeah, so we all get overwhelmed. And overwhelmed is, I say Overwhelmed is two things. One, it's, it's first of all, you not taking enough time to bring the right people onto your team. Mm. When you are overwhelmed, it's usually because you are trying to do too much yourself mm. because your company can always, I mean, any company can grow. If you have the business there, you can grow. But, you know, I was talking to an entrepreneur the other day and he's like, he can't grow because he has too much work to do and he doesn't have time to fire the, hire the people, right? And what I'm telling him is you have to make that time. That has, I say the CEO's number one job, number one from the day one, and I told you this, is bringing on board the right people. If yeah. you spend all your time literally doing nothing else but getting the right people on board, you that's all you need to do because literally they will do the rest. If they are the right people, you don't have to worry about those things. They're going to take care of them. And if they're not the right people, you need to replace them. So make that... If you don't want to be overwhelmed, make that your number one job. Love that answer. Love it. And just to follow up really quickly on that. So I know with a lot of newer entrepreneurs, Steve, what happens is they love what you're sharing right now, but they don't have the money to be able to do that. Any advice to, the, to that crowd? Pick an idea, first of all, where you don't need a lot of money to start. If you are going to say, I'm going to go to Mars, well, you better be Elon Musk. <laughs> to put that one on the plate. You, you Seriously, pick, there's so many, there's an infinite number of ideas out there. There's an infinite number of businesses that can benefit as, you know, with new innovations and there, you can do so many things in this world. Some of them require a lot of upfront capital. Others require time, investment in human capital. And that's something you can do. Like, look, if you're going to get people on your team at the beginning without a lot of money, 
you're going to have to motivate them, not through money, but through sharing a vision and a purpose with you. Get good at that. Get good at communicating to people of why what you're doing is so important. And then take the time to find people who share that with you, share that belief with you. Those people will stick with you longer. They'll make better partners. They'll be more motivated. You know, those are the people you need for a startup, at the, especially at the beginning stage. And uh, it doesn't require money. It, but it does require time. And if you don't have enough money to like survive, well, then you need to do it as you work, right? You, you need to hold down a full-time job and do it as a part-time thing until you really get it going. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for, for all of those answers and those shares, Steve. What other people that you know, successful like yourself, of course, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom podcast? So I'm going to recommend two people who I think are great. So one is Mark Netter. I, he is a former business partner of mine, a really great guy, and I will introduce you. And I think you'll find a lot of uh, different uh, synergies there. Another one is Manny T. He's an entrepreneur I'm working with now, a really amazing entrepreneur, and he helps startups. Like, so he has this whole platform for helping startups, helping other entrepreneurs succeed. And I'd like to introduce him to you. I love it. I love how we help one another make the world a better place. This is a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. All right. What is, now you've already shared so much (laughs) knowledge and wisdom. If you had to pick one thing, one thing, now let's go two two different routes. We talked a lot about startups up -hmm. to this point, right? So let's switch gears. If you had to pick one thing that you say somebody is a seasoned, now let me define that because- season could be 50 million or it could be 1 million, right? So, but as a seasoned entrepreneur, you've been around, you know, three to five years, you've got pretty decent footing. What do you think, what do you think is the biggest issue that you see there? And what advice would you give to someone who's in that stage of business, Steve? Any thoughts? So for any seasoned manager person out there in any business, uh, you can do one thing to improve your business. And it's what I call ask, don't tell. Mm -hmm. Very simple. When you engage with your team, your employees, instead of telling them what to do for the next week, ask them what they should be doing. What, so you want an an employee's preparing to host an event for your company. Instead of going and telling them exactly how to host the event, what to do, all the different things that you've seen work before, go to them and try this. You know, how do you think the event should run? Do you have any ideas on how we could make this better? How do you think we'll reach, can we double attendance? Do you think you can do that? Can we uh, make this an experience they won't forget? How could we do that? All of a sudden by asking them instead of telling them, boom, you're turning on a light bulb in their brain. They're like, oh, my boss just asked me how we can make this event better, how we can make it something people will remember. Now, if they come up with an idea, they're going to be take ownership of that idea because they you didn't tell them to do it. They can, and they might come up with an idea that's so much better than anything you've thought of, like in the past. Do ask, don't tell. Steve, I love that you shared that for so many reasons. Um, I just had like five stories to scroll through my experiences. In my mind, I was re- I was reminded, you know, and I just. I, what you said was so simple, but yet it's so brilliant. And a lot of us get caught up in the, you know, the whole forest and the trees thing. You get caught up and head down and we're, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're just, you, whether you're in leadership or management at, at a corporate level, like it hits so many different people and so many, just to ask some questions. You don't have to know everything. Stop hoarding all the information. Start asking questions. It's brilliant. It's truly brilliant. And so if anybody, you you know, you're listening, you're watching and you think that was pretty simple. I encourage you to think about what power is really in what Steve just shared, because that is a truly brilliant statement. And you start asking questions around people, you start empowering them. That, my friend, is very great, brilliant advice. So thank you very much. Look, I know we got to wrap it up. You and I could just chat and chat and chat and chat about business and all, all the impact that we can create in the world. I know it. Let me ask you this last question and then we're going to, I'm going to move to how people can get in touch with you and they grab your books Mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. Look, I believe, and I imagine you do too, that we live where we work to live. I always fear getting that wrong. (laughs) I don't fear much, but I fear getting that statement wrong. We work 
to live, not live to work. So I'd be fascinated to know what's the most fun vacation you've ever had, Steve? Well, I hope it's the one that's coming up. I'm about to leave tomorrow on vacation. So I'm going to Sedona, Arizona. But I will tell you, I've had so many fun vacations. It's either, probably the most fun was uh, in the middle of COVID, I decided uh, to drive across the country and work uh, from Airbnbs. So I'd rent an Airbnb for a week in one city, then I'd go to another and another. I did this for five months. Is absolutely amazing. I saw America like I'd never seen. I'd never driven across the country. And I got to spend enough time in each city, even though I was working, you know, because you're there for a week, you get to see a lot. And it was just an, an amazing experience. Love it. I love that. I, I too have packed all my stuff and have been out on the road for a while now. So I love it. So yeah. that's great. It, it's such an experience. I mean, some people never get to get that experience. So thanks for sharing, Steve. Look, I know you're working on a bunch of initiatives. You got some fascinating stuff going on. So share us, um, just share, share with the audience, like what you're working on right now, how you're serving people and then how they can get in touch with you when they, then they watch and they listen and they're like, I need to reach out to that guy. What's the best sure. way to reach so, out to you also? Um, let me tell you. So if you want uh, to reach out to me, it's super easy to find. Just go to founderspace.com, founderspace. Uh, we have tons of videos there. We have tons of materials and online startup kit, all this stuff for entrepreneurs. They're my books. You can get all my books there and you can email me. Or if you want to get a hold of me, I'm on virtually every social network. Just search for Steve Hoffman, Founder Space, or my nickname, Captain Hoff. And LinkedIn is a great place to find me. I love it. Of those, I want to get to like one focus, right? So of those, what's the best? What's the best way? When somebody's just die hard, they listen, and you're like, I got to get in touch with this guy now. Just go to the website. From the website? Put a, hit contact, put my name in there. They all get to me. Love it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And what, what's the number one initiative you're working on right now? Is it just working with people one-on-one -on -one inside the founder space or what so is the, your main so I initiative? I work with entrepreneurs one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, I work with groups. We have batches that go through founder space. I, I, I'm just constantly engaging with entrepreneurs around the world. So, you know, I work in the U S do a lot of work abroad. I'm probably going to be going abroad in June to work with entrepreneurs in Europe. So no matter where your audience is, you know, if they want me to engage with them, like I travel a lot and, and, you know, all throughout Asia, all throughout Europe, I will be very happy. They just need to contact me. I love it. Steve, thank you so much for the investment thank of you. your time for to be here to thank be able you. to serve people in the way that you do. I really want to highlight and showcase you. Thank you so much. I celebrate you. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. If you're looking for more on leadership, sales, marketing, or operations to drive team development, higher quality, and high-level sustainable profits, we encourage you to join the Built for Brilliance community on Facebook or reach out to us about one of our mastermind groups, coaching, or consulting, or even fractional COO services. You can reach us at buildbrilliance.net slash contact. We thank you for listening, for sharing the show, and appreciate your rating and reviews as this makes more shows possible. Thanks for joining us.